Good morning and thank you for joining me this morning. I'm in my office at the Chancery. I'm by myself, so I'm not wearing a mask. If there were people here, I would certainly have my mask on. Just before the lockdown began, I spoke to you and I said that I was facing one of the most difficult decisions in my life. And that was the decision to stop with public worship in all our parishes as we knew then that the COVID-19 virus had arrived in Cape Town. Now again, I face a very difficult decision. The government has agreed that public worship may recommence in places of public worship. There are strict restrictions. One of those restrictions is that there could only be a maximum of 50 people present at any public service. And I'm very much aware that people are longing to return to church. I'm aware that many, many people are longing to receive the sacraments, to receive communion, to go to confession, and simply to be before the blessed sacrament in the church. We want things to get back to, to normal, or what we thought was normal. But the question I've had to ask myself, is this the right time for us to return to public worship? It's a very important question because we know that the infection rate in South Africa in general is going up. It's not coming down at the moment. And Cape Town is particularly badly affected. We have the highest infection rate in our whole country. We have the highest death rate in the country. And the infection rate is still going up. We are told different things, but more or less that probably in mid-July or thereabouts, we will reach our peak in Cape Town. And then hopefully the infection rate will begin a downward trend. But I've really had to search my soul. I've had to pray and seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit and tried my very best to seek God's will through prayer, certainly, and through reflection, and also seeking professional advice from the experts. The question is, is this the right time to open our churches for public worship with all the restrictions that are in place? The lockdown has been very successful in terms of flattening the curve. Certainly, it slowed down the rate of infection considerably. The lockdown has given space and time for our health services to prepare for those who will have to be hospitalized because of the virus. And indeed, there's been behavior change. And we know that people have become much more conscious of the need for social distancing, to wear masks and so on. But that hasn't really been that successful in my opinion. And I've spoken about this on a number of occasions in my reflections people don't seem to take this seriously sometimes. We need to change. If you listen to Bishop Sylvester's reflection today, and if you didn't listen, may I suggest you, you go back to it and listen to it. He made the point that everyone must play their part. Each and every one of us has a responsibility. He says that we must embrace change. And he talks about two types of change, a superficial change, where people say, well, tomorrow I've got to get up early. I normally get up at six o'clock. I've got to get up at four o'clock because I've got to take someone to the airport or something like that. That's a superficial change, a temporary change. But he talks also about a second type of change, which is a much deeper change that comes from deep within ourselves. And that is a change of saying, I'm going to adopt a new set of behaviors. In the church, we call this conversion, changing our lives, changing our lifestyle. And that is precisely the sort of change that we are in need of as we try to overcome this virus that has affected so many people in the world. We've got a lot of work to be to, and, and the need to work together in order to achieve that type of change. 
I know that there are probably many, many of you who were hoping that Mass would resume this weekend. I'm sad to disappoint you, but I really believe that this is not the time to open our churches for public worship. We have got to have a phased in approach in order to achieve that. First of all, our parishes are not prepared in terms of implementing all the regulations that have been set by the government. And these regulations are very important. It's not just the law, it's about protecting people's lives. For, for example, our churches must all be demarcated where people can sit in order to achieve social distancing. In other words, we want two meters in front and behind the person, two meters on each side, so that there is proper social distancing. Every church must be equipped with sanitizers. Every church must be cleaned and cleaned before a public worship and after a public worship. People have to register in order to enter the church so that if somebody does get infected or if there is an infection, others can easily be traced. There has to be a questionnaire that is filled in. Some of you would know this from other places. For example, if you go into a hospital, you will be questioned about, have you had, have you, are, are you having headaches recently? Uh, do you have a cough? Are you feeling well? Um, have you been nauseous? All those questions have got to be asked and a form filled in. Your temperature must be taken. Now, what we're saying is that we need to give our parishes the opportunity to put all those things in place, that they are properly equipped, to ensure that they are properly equipped. And they also need to give training to people who would take care of those regulations. So in other words, those who will fill in the questionnaire, those who will register people, take their temperatures and so on. Because if we're going to do this, it has to be done properly. And people must be aware that if they're coming to a place of public worship, we will have to wear our masks throughout the Mass. All of us, priests, bishops, uh, all the people would have to wear their mask throughout. So we need this time to prepare, to equip our churches, but also to train people. But even when that is achieved, we won't immediately go for allowing 50 people into the church. I just find that unmanageable at the moment. We're going to start off much smaller, a maximum of six people. And we're not going to do that even until we've noticed how things are going in the country and how things are going in the Western Cape. Once the infection rate starts, to go, starts going down, I will feel much, much happier about allowing this. But at the moment, I feel that we've got a lot of work to protect the lives and the well-being of other people. So we're going to do this phased in approach. And even when we do start public worship, it will be with a very small number of people, six people. And then we'll try to build up from that. But we, I can't say with certainty when that will begin. However, one possibility, and I think it's very important, is that parishes will be able to open their churches for a certain period every day. That will differ from parish to parish, and it's up to the parish priest and the parish pastoral council to make a decision during which hours the church will be opened. And then people can go in for private prayer, just to spend some time in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Again, all the regulations have got to be observed and everything must be put into place first, like temperatures and registering and, and, and answering the questionnaire. And we would ask people to spend about 20 minutes maximum in church in order that others can have a chance. And we would never allow more than five people at any given time. All of this is so that we can get into a routine of being aware of our behavior and the need for social distancing and for hygienic practices. Secondly, priests have been declared essential workers, which means that if you would like to speak to a priest for spiritual guidance, if you would like to go to confession, you can make that arrangement with him. You can talk to him and make an arrangement when you can meet. And those who are critically ill at home can be visited, may receive Holy Communion and may be anointed. Of course, we can't get into the hospitals at the moment, 
because most of the hospitals, if not all, are not allowing visitors. I've also got to be very conscious of the need to protect our priests. Our priests, many of them are over 60, many of them have pre-existing conditions, and I need also to protect their health. They must take all the necessary precautions. And in certain cases, for example, if somebody is critical ill in a parish where there is a priest over 60 and who have some, has some other pre-existing condition that puts him at risk, he would probably ask a priest in a neighboring parish, a younger priest, uh, to, to visit the person who is ill. It's very important that we change our behavior, as Bishop Sylvester has said, and, and as we've been trying to encourage people to do, we must take responsibility for this. Many of our parishes have been doing live streaming, and in a little time, once they've got themselves properly equipped and they've got people trained in the parishes, we will ask those parishes with live streaming, or at least some of them, to start allowing about six people to come to Mass in order that we can show people through live streaming how things will be done and what is necessary so that all of us can model that behavior in the future. So regrettably, I have made the decision that public worship cannot resume at the moment. It's been a very difficult decision, but I think it is the best decision I could make given the circumstances. So the dispensation from attending Mass, the dispensation from your Sunday obligation to attend Mass is extended. But I, as I've said to you before, I cannot dispense you from keeping the Sabbath day holy. And therefore, on Sunday, on the Sabbath day, follow Mass through live streaming. Make sure you do the readings of the Mass. Make sure you make that act of spiritual communion so that you join with us and join with the body of Christ in a spiritual way. We long for the day when we can share the Eucharist together. That day will come. But in the meantime, what we've got to concentrate on is protecting the lives of others, being with them, giving solidarity and supporting them. So many people are suffering because of this virus. So many people are economically adversely affected we know that many people are starving. We've got to work through it. We've got to try to do the very best we can to embrace change and to understand that each and every one of us has got a responsibility, not only for his or her health, but for the health of other people. We are indeed our brother's keeper. Let's just pause for a moment to pray. Heavenly Father, God Almighty, Father of compassion, mercy and love. We know that we, you care for us, your children. Help us, Lord, in this very painful and difficult time, a time akin to the time of your people in the desert, that we may embrace the change that you're calling us to, that this time will not be a waste of time and not a time simply of wishful thinking. I wish I was back at Mass. I wish I could receive communion. But through the pain of it and through the pain of our separation from the sacraments, that we are able to grow spiritually, to learn new things, to deepen our faith, our hope and our love, to deepen our trust in you and the fact that you are always present in our lives, that through this hardship, we may continue to carry Jesus' cross and to help him as Simon of Cyrene did. Give us the strength, Lord, to carry this cross in our daily lives. Make us hopeful people, not always complaining, not always wishing if this could be different, but trying to learn what you're calling us to be, what you're calling us to do. Give us compassionate hearts, Lord, that we may always care for our neighbor, that we will promote the well-being and the health of others, that we will be responsible people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stay in the peace of Christ. And please be assured that you are in my daily prayers. Every morning when I go into my chapel at home, I am praying for all the families of our Archdiocese. Please be strong in your faith. Persevere. God is with us. God will not desert us. 
and we will get through this. Thank you and God bless you.